Christians and Jews under attack, showing the ugly side of the Arab Spring. The rebel held Aleppo in Syria, uh, in there, in that area. Seven people holed up in a nursing home are all that's left of a once vibrant Christian community, as we're hearing horrifying accounts of an entire Christian community, m many of them actually, systematically wiped out in Syria's brutal civil war. Joining me now to discuss, John Bolton, former ambassador to the United Nations and a Fox News contributor, and Ralph Peters, a Fox News strategic analyst who just wrote an eye-opening column on what he sees as the, quote, accepted wide-scale genocide of Christians and Jews in the two years following the start of the Arab Spring. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Ralph, let me, let me just ask you about that first, because we've had a lot of folks come on the program and say things are no better under, uh, under uh, Morsi in Egypt, for example, than they were under Mubarak. But they're no worse either, that this targeting of Christians that we've seen in Egypt and other places in the wake of the Arab Spring has been going on for a long time, even prior to the Arab Spring. Well, I, I think you'd have to ask the Coptic Christians in Egypt. They certainly don't feel like they're better off. Uh, there's been much more violence towards them. But throughout the region, the long-term persecution and driving out the Jews and Christians who inhabited this region for in the case of Christians, 2,000 years, Megan, for the Jews, 3,000 years, they have been systematically murdered or driven out by radical Muslims for a long time. But in the last decade, it has really, really accelerated. The number of Christians in Iraq has fallen by two-thirds. Bethlehem, the birthplace of Christianity, is f the population's flipped. It's now over 80% Muslim with Christians fleeing virtually every day. It's much worse for Christians today, and as you pointed about it, speaking about Aleppo, the very insurgents that our government is thinking about supporting are the ones killing Christians in Syria. Uh, uh, Ambassador Bolton, why? Why is it that we're seeing the numbers shift so dramatically? I mean, and have been over the past decades, but are continuing to now. Well, I think uh, the, the wave of Islamic fundamentalism that we've seen throughout the region uh, is having its impact. And, you know, the comparison in Egypt is particularly acute. I've seen figures of up to uh, or over 100,000 uh, Coptic Christians having fled from Egypt since the fall of Mubarak. And that number's over a year old. My guess is the number who have actually left Egypt is much higher. And the difference from the Mubarak era could not be more uh, clear. In, you know, when Mubarak was president, one of the most senior diplomats in Egypt was Boutrous Boutrous Ghali. Uh, who Mubarak pushed for and ultimately got accepted as uh, UN Secretary General, a Coptic Christian. That isn't very likely to happen these days. Ralph, you say in your piece that we are witnesses to murder and our governments are, accomplice, are accomplices. What do you mean? Well, look at the way uh, Washington falls all over itself to please the worst elements among American Muslims, the most radical elements, the Saudi-funded elements. Uh, and. At the same time, they will not stick up for these Christians who are being murdered or driven out. Most of the Jews have already been driven out. And it's a terrible double standard. Uh, where, you know, the same rules should apply to everybody. Uh, Muslims, Christians, Jews should all be treated fairly. And when one religious group, I don't care who it is, is slaughtering the others, it's time to call a time out on them. And oh, by the way, every time the American establishment media chastises Israel and says, well, they've got to give back Palestinian land. Remember, the Arabs have stolen land that the Jews inhabited for 3,000 years. Where is the equity in that? I know that Ralph believes that we are at the end of a story, that we are, uh, you write in your piece, this is an old, old story nearing its end. And, I, and you don't like the way the end looks. Ambassador Bolton, how do you like the way the ending is looking? Well, I, I agree. It's certainly not looking good. Look, these Christian communities in Egypt throughout the Middle East uh, are ancient. Their traditions go back a long way. They haven't been large for many, many years. Uh, but they are being systematically ground down in this conflict. And, and you know, this is a manifestation uh, of the religious nature of the conflict. It's not about economics or deprivation. People don't become radical Islamicists because they were born poor. It's a form of religious fanaticism, and that typically means wiping out your opposition. I think that's one reason people are worried that if the opposition prevails uh, in Syria over the Assad regime, there's going to be a bloodbath, especially against the Christians, but also the Druze and the Alawite supporters of Assad. It's very, very worrisome. Gentlemen, thank you both. It's an interesting piece, Ralph. Thank, thank you for you, sharing Megan. it with us.